In 2026, you can prompt image models to generate basically anything you want. You just say absolutely anything you want, like for example, a dog chasing a cat in spacesuits on Mars, and it'll just make it for you. This model, thus, you may think, has to learn a mapping from all possible prompts to a space of absolutely all the possible images of a certain size. This space of all the possible images of a certain size, as you and I will see, is absolutely huge, like way huger than anyone can possibly imagine. And it's not even feasible to learn. So how do these image models actually learn anything? Let's start with what makes up an image, pixels. A pixel is just a single color. You can imagine it being on a spectrum from pure black all the way to pure white. The only difference between pure black, one of these dark grays over here, another lighter gray over here, and pure white is just a single value. Let's call it brightness. We can thus call this pixel one-dimensional, in the sense of it needing just one piece of information to fully describe it. Now, you could also imagine, if you will, extending this pixel into the realm of RGB. Now, there are three values that describe this pixel, the intensity of red, green, and blue, and varying any of these changes the color produced. Thus, an RGB pixel can be said to have three dimensions. The reason I'm kind of teeing up this idea of dimensionality is for when we consider an entire image, say 64 by 64 pixels. Now we have 64 squared, or 4096 pixels, each represented with three dimensions. Each image thus requires 12,288 numbers to fully describe. This is a significantly larger amount, and it seems impossible to comprehend what the possible space of 64 by 64 images even is, let alone images that are even bigger. What I'm now showing are some randomly sampled points from the 12,288 dimensional space that describes a 64 by 64 RGB image. Most of these, as you might expect, have no structure at all and are completely random. And again, this is just like pixel art at this point. GPT Image 1.5, which is OpenAI's latest image model, can produce 1,536 by 1,024 RGB images, which would be 4.7 million dimensional space. So let's just say that each of these RGB values was represented as an integer between 0 and 255, which by the way is a pretty common way to represent it in computers. That would mean that GPT image 1.5 would somehow have to learn a mapping into 256 to the power of 4.7 million dimensional space, which, if you know anything about how big exponentials get, is absolutely impossible. So how do the image models of today learn mappings into this absolutely insane number of possible combinations? Well, to be brief, they don't. The reason the image models of today work so well is because the data of real images that models come across when training does not exist in this massive 256 to the power of 4.7 million dimensional space. Think about all the random images we sampled before, the absolute noise ones. Are those actually images the model would come across when training? Well, probably not, right? How often would a model come across images of pure, complete noise on the internet? it more likely comes across images with much more structure, such as this one, or this one. These images often share some structure too. So for example, most pictures of humans have shapes something like this. And pictures of the sunset often look something like this. A nice way to think about this fact is to think about the fact that to describe your friend, you don't have to show someone every single pixel of your friend. You just have to describe a few dimensions, like maybe their height, their weight, their eye color, their hair type, and maybe a few more. And given that human structure is basically the same for everybody, 
these few dimensions almost completely describe people. So these patterns significantly reduce the dimensionality of the space of images that a model is likely to be trained on. This is why the model is able to learn a reasonable mapping, because it only needs to map to a tiny, 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 tiny fraction of possible images when a user prompts it. The intrinsic dimensionality is the term used to refer to this, and it's the absolute minimum amount of dimensions that are needed to span an entire data set. It's hard to estimate exactly what the intrinsic dimensionality of any data set is, though some people have tried coming up with estimates. For example, SciFAR 10 is a popular data set with 10 classes and consists of 32 by 32 pixel RGB images. So if you just multiply everything, you would assume that the dimensionality of these images would be 3072. But researchers have found that the intrinsic dimensionality probably lies closer to 13 to 26, which is like 100 to 200 times smaller. A way you can see that the models of today struggle to map into every single possible dimension is simply by asking them to come up with pure noise. If I ask Google's nano banana model to come up with noise, it comes up with something like this, which would appear like noise if you don't look at it too hard, but it actually has a lot of structure. So this shows that models actually haven't generalized to the complete space very well, because it's far too large, uh, as otherwise they would be okay generating pure noise.